question. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Dion. Uh, my background is I spent 10 years as a professional race car driver before becoming a co-founder here at Blaze. And essentially, the reason we started this company is I wanted to make it more accessible, more affordable to learn personally with the best coaches in the world. Uh, we started in motorsports. We since scaled and in, in, into sports like soccer, uh, and we're continuing to do that. And you know that this this whole evening just fits perfectly into why we started this, um, why we started Blaze, right? And so I'm really excited to introduce Travis Thomas. He's someone that I got to know personally. Gosh, Seth. Six seven years ago, yeah, yeah during, at least at least seven years, yeah, crazy. Uh, during my off season training, I went to IMG one year and got to learn with him, and and I found him just a phenomenal human being, a phenomenal coach. Um, but I probably can't do all of the the justice in the world to in introducing yourself, so I'll throw it over to Travis just to give a really quick background on himself, and then we can just dive right in. Yeah, no, Dion, I appreciate it. No, and I still remember. You know, uh, meeting you at IMG Academy, and we we did a few sessions together in the in the leadership room, and um, it's been great to be able to stay in contact with you over the years as our our lives and our our, our professions have continued to to go on. But yeah, so um, I'm a performance coach that that focuses on mindset, team dynamics, and culture. Uh, and so I've been I work with a lot of youth college and and professional teams. I work with the teams as well as as well as people on an individual basis. Uh, again, spent a few years at IMG Academy as a leadership coach, working with athletes from all over the world. Um, and growing up, uh, I played sports. Uh, sports was my first passion. I played soccer in college. Uh, coached a little bit in high school. Got away from it. Uh, actually, got into the world of improvisation and improvisational comedy. And I uh, got trained in that and then started performing in that at sort of like a professional high level, which was amazing and fun and have continued to do that and, and still perform very a few times a year. Uh, but that's about 25, 25 plus years now of doing that. And as I got into personal development and then into performance coaching at the, the corporate level, the, the sports performance uh, and individually, uh, I've really tapped into those principles from improvisation and helping people uh, deal with deal with pressure, deal with adversity, deal with um, deal with performance from a, again from an individual standpoint as well as from how to build dynamic, high performing teams. And so, currently, uh, the the most exciting thing I'm doing right now is for the last you three mean beyond years beyond having joining us tonight, right? Be, beyond well, that's a given. It's a given. <laughs> exactly. that this is by far the pinnacle of, of my career to this point is being here. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, for the last three years, I've been uh, the leadership and team dynamics coach um, for the U.S. men's national soccer team. Uh, so I've been doing that for three years. And um, <clears throat> everything that I've been doing with the team for the past three years, from working with the team and the staff on the mental skills and, and building just a great environment for high performance and culture, uh, has been leading up to trying to qualify for a World Cup, which only happens every four years. And the U.S. missed the, two th the, the last World Cup mm -hmm. in 2018. And so it'll be eight years, really, since our last World Cup. And so we qualified. And, and uh, I head off with the team in, in just about a month to, uh, to Qatar or Qatar uh, for, for the World Cup. And so kind of a dream come true, being able to, growing up, being a soccer fan, being a soccer player, and then kind of coming full circle mm -hmm. and finding a way to, to work and serve the national team uh, doing what I love and 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 doing it from a completely different perspective. So um, yeah, happy to That's share awesome. kind of any of those ideas as we kind of dive in today. That's awesome, man. Uh, well, first of all, look, you know, you know, we're, we're pretty much all rooting for you, and and we're, we've got all of our support as you guys head to Qatar later this. Uh, they get a little over a month, and we'll be yeah. we'll be following along. It's cool to kind of know somebody else to have that more of an emotional tie, even more than just watching the country, right? So um, before we really kick off here, I wanted to sort of set set the tone of the evening, kind of what, to, to set some expectations. Um, so overall, our conversation tonight is going to be focused on elite level mindsets. And I know we have a lot of race car drivers, motorcycle race, racers, carters in, in the audience. They're probably like, why the hell am I talking to a soccer guy? Um, I, I think I know a lot of you personally, and, and I think a lot of you have heard me kind of uh, preach, the, it, it, and I say preach, but it's my deep belief that performance is performance. I don't care if you're a soccer player, or a race car driver, uh, a ballet dancer, or a business person, um, the, the principles all relate. Um, so I want you to know that we're going to try to make this a little bit more broad so that it applies to everyone here. Um, the other thing here is what we don't want is to form a boring lecture. Um, this will be a little bit of a more interactive conversation tonight. We definitely want you all chiming in, 
asking questions, I highly recommend trying to use the chat feature. Um, and you can have change the two to everyone. And if you want to ask questions or make a joke or you want to make fun of one of us, throw it in there. I'll try to read questions aloud as we go through this conversation. The other fun part is some of you may be called upon this evening to answer some questions, have a little bit of fun, join in. Um, so we've got everyone sort of auto-muted. Just remember that you're probably on mute. Um, so if we call on you, try to, to welcome yourself. I see Tracy like, oh, no, don't do this. Let me turn my video off. <laughs> but we're, we definitely want to make this interactive, make this fun. Um, so it's a small group setting, intimate setting. And we're going to have this conversation around elite level mindsets. And um, it's going to be more of an organic conversation. We're going to be more me asking questions and learning uh, in front of all of you because I'm super interested in this topic. And with that, Travis, do you want to, to just go ahead and kick us off for the evening here? Yeah, let's do it. I love it. And, and again, as, a, uh, as, a, as an improviser, I, I try to keep my talks and sessions as interactive as possible. The last thing you want to do is just listen to me for, for 60 minutes. And so, <laughs> all right, let's jump into it. All right, so if you are coming to this talk um, from a motorsports background, go ahead and turn your camera on if it's not on already. Um, and if you're not from motorsports, you can turn your camera off. So motorsports, camera on. Ooh, All I right. Like that. All right. Okay. All right. Seeing a few cameras click on. Excellent. Excellent. I got a thumbs up from, uh, uh, from Ben, who's already got his camera on. Fantastic. If you are coming to us from, from the soccer world, turn your camera on. Yeah. And if, if you're not noticing, this is just a way to basically get everybody to turn your cameras on. If you're coming from any other discipline or sport and you uh, accidentally ended up here, you can turn your camera on as well. Yeah. We'll look at everybody. I, I'm, I'm giving you a hard time. You're not going to need to, to leave your cameras on. But uh, like Deanna was saying, we're going to keep this interactive. And our topic today is, is high-performance mindset. So what does that really mean? Like what, what in the world do we mean by high-performance mindset? So I want to do an activity and uh, look at, based on our numbers, Dean, I don't think it's going to take us too long to get through this and get everybody involved. Love it. Because, because, and there's not a lot of people here, Yep. Uh, which is great. This is nice and intimate. I wouldn't do this with a big group. Mm -hmm. But looking at the, the people who are here, I want to have a singing competition, Dion, a singing competition. I don't know right. how well this is going to sound. Uh, so, especially, I'm going to talk for myself. All right. If anyone jumps off the call right now, we know that you were just, you jumped off because you're afraid, right? So we're going to have a singing, <laughs> <Call it's, them out. laughs> a singing competition. And here are the rules to the singing competition. You only need to sing for 30 seconds and you're not allowed to sing the birthday song um, or, uh, or the, or, or sing a national anthem, right? So you have to pick a song, 30 seconds, no musical accompaniment, put those acapella uh, to the tune. I know you guys all got the, you're recording this call type thing, because what we're <laughs> going to do in the chat after is we're going to start to, we'll ask people like who, which song inspired them most, right? So we'll all sing our little 30 seconds. And then in the chat, we'll just kind of vote like which of the songs really kind of inspired you the most. And so instead so we're of- We're going to pick an inspirational song here, right? Yeah. yeah like yeah. the or Macarena just, or something or whose like voice, that. Yeah, <laughs> who's, whose voice really inspired you? And so instead of you guys volunteering. I'm just going to pick random people and I'll call your name. We'll, we'll, we'll spotlight you 30 seconds and then boom, we'll go to the next one. Have we lost anyone during the chat? I'm just, I, I am shocked. We have not lost right, anyone. I don't see anyone fantastic. warming up yet though. I feel All like right. I need to. That's why the cameras are off because they're <laughs> off screen. They're, they're getting their tea. They're getting ready to go. All right. Let me see. The first person I'm going to call upon Dion is, uh, I'm just kidding, right? We're not going to have a singing contest. <laughs> All right. Everybody, everybody's off the hook. Tracy, how you feeling? You okay with that? A little sigh of relief. You're on mute still, by the way. Tracy, you good? Or did you want to <laughs> <Thank> sing? Thank God. <laughs> Samantha, thank God. Yeah. All right. Looks like Ben is I was, I was really oh. looking forward to Ben singing. Like, I yeah. think he can, I think he can belt one out here. <laughs> if we have time. You wouldn't want to hear it, but it was going to be hail to the victors. So. Hail oh, to the victors. no, a Michiganer. All right. I'm from Flint, <laughs> I'm from Flint originally, but all right. Um, and so, okay. So there actually is a point to our singing, not singing contest. So we're talking about high performance mindset. What I want everyone to reflect upon right now is as soon as I started to queue up, there, we're going to have a singing contest. Reflect back on your thinking. Where did your thinking go? I, can, I, <laughs> I can talk for myself, man. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, my my thoughts went immediately to, oh God, oh God, what's the song? Like, uh, uh, man, I can't think of a single song. Uh, what's the like? I can't like. I just literally could not think of a single song in the world, let alone the lyrics behind the song. I just totally froze. Yeah, absolutely. How many of you thought like your initial thought was, wait, are you serious? Are you kidding me? Uh, like a, a little <laughs> bit of panic, a little bit of freaked out, <laughs> embarrassed over here. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> embarrassed. Um. Oh shoot. Like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna humiliate myself. Okay, so. Probably a lot of us started off with a little bit of panic, a little bit of embarrassment. Yeah, that would have been me still. Um, and then some of you maybe stayed there and you're like, if he calls on me, I'm just going to pretend that I don't hear him or I have technical <laughs> issues, right? Whatever, however to get out of it. And then some of you probably started in a little bit of a negative panic and then kind of started to maybe climb out, claw your way out a little bit with like, oh, okay, if I have to do this and you started to problem solve it a little bit. I mean, so, Ben even was able to get to the point of picking a song. Like, I'm impressed by that. I couldn't even yes. get to that point. <laughs> who had who had a song ready to go? If you had a song ready to go, remember, I'm not going to make you sing, but just <laughs> put it in the chat. Well, we had Hail to the Victor from uh, from, from Ben. Um, I Will Survive by Samantha. That was probably a little just to help you survive the moment, right? I Will Survive. <laughs> Amazing. What, so what would your song be, Travis? Well, here's the thing I had to do this, right? So one of the things we have to do with, uh, with the national team, sweet child of mine, use of nice. So when, when, uh, when you go into a, uh, a national team camp, which is anywhere from a week to three weeks to a month, whether you're a staff member or whether you are a player, if it's your first camp at the end of the camp, the last, the, the last dinner before the end of the camp, you have to stand up on a chair in front of everybody and answer questions from the group and then you have to sing a song. You you pick a song and you sing. So I had to do this, right? Just a couple of years ago. And I'm, I don't consider myself a singer. So I'm like, okay, ooh, my, I don't have the vocality to pull this off. What can I do? What can I do? Well, I like rap, but I'm, you know, I'm not really a rapper. So I've got, I was addicted to the Alexander Hamilton musical, my family and I, for like three years, we listened to it over and over and over again. So I'm like, I can do the opening song to the Hamilton soundtrack, which Amazing. isn't a, really singing as much as kind of spoken rap. And that's what I did. And so again, I had to work myself through, okay, shoot, shoot, shoot. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And Amazing. so the reason I like doing this, Dion, is few things in life terror, terrify most of us than having to kind of probably sing in public. And even though we've got like probably some elite performers here, whether from auto sports or from soccer or whatever it is, we can all kind of relate to, oh, shoot, I've got to sing, put myself on the spot. So when we think about mindset, pressure, being on the spot, having to, having to perform uh, under duress, do, do, are we really conscious of where our thoughts go? And so, so my job as a, as a performance coach that focuses on mental skills is to help athletes. And I, I do a lot in the corporate world as well as to help, like you said, you know, performance is performance, mm -hmm. is just to help people understand some tools and some ideas of when we feel under pressure or we feel stress how we can shift our focus to being effective and productive in the moment. And so, and also when we're not under stress or under pressure, what are some different things that we can do to make sure that we are focusing on the right things that allow us to consistently perform at a high level? And that's what, that's what kind of mindset or high performance mindset is for me. When, you, when you're able to combine your physical ability, right? If I'm a driver, Right, being able to combine the best of my driving ability, combine that with the best of my my mental ability, and you put those together, and that is your optimal performance. And so often we might have someone who has a ton of skill but not great focus, and so mm -hmm. the performance is going to come down. We might have someone with mediocre skill and high focus, which means they're going to top out here. But, but you know, ideally, we want to get both of them to the same level. And so Absolutely. being able to combine those two, but as you know, we spend so much time focusing on the physical part. Mm -hmm. We don't spend a ton of time of understanding how to engage the mental part in a way that isn't a deterrent, but is actually an asset to our performance. Fascinating. So there, I mean, there's, there's so much to, to unpack there, but you know, where my mind goes here is, you know, one of the first things you said on, on this exercise is you asked us to think back to where our mind went when you gave us this challenge, right? And yep, yep. one of the things that I, I've been fortunate enough to go and learn from people like yourself and, and some, you know, really this 
amazing teachers in this space. And one of the things that that I learned early on, and I, I feel like I'm, of course, still trying to, to to master to deal with, is the the acknowledgement or even the uh, ability to observe what what I've been told is like uh, negative chatter, like your your yeah. mind yeah. telling you the oh no you're gonna suck what is like you're terrible, yeah. um, but even just knowing when you're in the moment of performance. No, like realizing your mind has drifted off to that negative chatter earlier, just re like, it's hard to put into words, but it's like, sometimes you just don't even realize that you've gone down this path. So how would you, for, for someone that's just getting started in this space, like, how do you think about teaching them to start to observe what that mind is doing while they're in that, you know, heightened pressure uh, uh, while they're performing really? Yeah. Well, I mean, you said a bunch of things right there, Dan, that, that, is, that is really, really powerful. And just to hit on a few, you, th you said is our ability to stay in the moment, right? And again, when, when we talk about what is, what is someone who is really mentally focused or mentally tough, it's their ability to focus and stay in the present moment with the action that they're performing, mm -hmm. right? How often uh, if when you're driving a car, your thought starts to jump through what is coming or what has already happened. But where is the race actually happening? It's happening in the moment right now, mm -hmm. turn by turn by turn. We get, it, we get into trouble, same on the soccer field, <clears throat> is when I start thinking about what is going to happen or what might happen as well as I can't believe I, 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 you know, can't believe I made a bad turn or I can't believe I made a bad touch. And we, our attention starts to go either then mm -hmm. or when, right? Future or present. Our past, or, past or future, where is the event ever happening now? And then now, and then now. So what we're talking about is it's just we're, we're learning some tools to help bring our attention to the present moment, which is the only place that life is ever happening. It's the only place that the event, that the race is ever happening. It's the only place that the soccer game is ever happening is now, and then now, and then now. And, and the other thing that you mentioned, which I think is so powerful, and I think it's what hopefully I do with my work more than anything, is that we need to normalize this idea of pressure. And when someone feels like, feels that there's stress, anxiety, pressure, fear in one of these situations, that's completely normal. If you're feeling pressure, that's normal. If you're nervous, that's normal. If you're afraid, anxious, that's normal. Our job really isn't necessarily to remove the pressure. It's to shift what we're actually focusing on. And so I like to say, if you feel pressure, that means you care. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't want someone to care less. I want them to care just as much, but I don't want them to think of just, but just thinking about, and what is the pressure or fear about the pressure or fear is because they're envisioning a possible outcome that is undesirable. Mm -hmm. And so they're thinking about it. Therefore they feel pressure. When we think about a possible outcome that is desirable, what do we feel in the dead? We feel excited. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about the opportunity or I'm nervous about the opportunity. You know what, Dion? Neither one of them really matters. They're both future. They're both futures that don't exist. Mm -hmm. What should I be focusing on instead? The actions or the behaviors that are going to lead to a desired outcome, the actions or the behaviors. So I've gotten away from asking athletes before performances Hey, how are you feeling today? Why does it matter? Because it doesn't serve I, a purpose. I feel great. Oh, I'm super confident. Awesome. Does that mean you're going to have a great race? No. No. And hey, like, to be honest with you, even if I wasn't, what's the chances? Like, even if I really trust you, if I'm going into an event, I'm probably, even if I'm feeling unconfident, nervous, the chances of me actually going out and telling anyone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not if I, if I right? tell, if I tell a coach that they might be like, well, I guess you're not ready. So you're not going to play like, Oh, should yeah. I have to lie about it now instead <laughs> yeah. of, so like, whether you feel, whether you feel great or whether you feel horrible, neither one of those are an indicator of your actual performance. What is an indicator of your actual performance? Your ability to focus on the actions that are required or necessary in order to be effective. And so what I've shifted Dion is to asking players or athletes or people before a performance is, Hey, what are you focused on today? Let's take the feeling out of it, right? What are you focused on today? Oh, I'm focused on, um, I'm focused on, 
uh, just being committed to as many smooth, efficient turns as possible. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm focused on uh, just staying relaxed in the corners, whatever it is, soccer players, right. I'm focused on winning tackles and distributing the ball. Mm -hmm. Because if you're focused on action, on the actions, if I'm thinking about it, what am I actually going to have a better chance of doing? Executing on what you're thinking about, right? Executing those actions. If I'm thinking about how nervous I am, what am I going to do? I'm going to keep reinforcing my feelings instead mm -hmm. of my actions. And so it's not that I don't care about someone's feelings. Of course, I care about their feelings. But when it comes to the performance, mm -hmm. hey, coach, I'm really, really nervous. Hey, awesome. You care about what we're doing. Okay. So you're really nervous. That's okay. That's great. Instead of trying to change that, hey, what are you going to be focused? What, what one or two things, if you really execute these two things today, you're probably going to have a good race. You're probably going to have a good game. Mm -hmm. Well, I would focus on this. I would focus on that. Great. Let's focus on those and see what happens. So I, I want to dig in a little bit deeper there. And, and I, I, I'm coming at this from helping me improve as a coach um, to, to everyone that I work with. And one of the things that I try to focus on with anyone that I'm coaching is sort of not just the what, but also the timing behind mm. when we transition. Yeah. So one of the 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 beliefs that I've had, and, and I'd be interested to get your thoughts on this is, you know, I've, I think we all know the, the impact of visualization, the impact of knowing what to focus on. Um, and, and oftentimes when I'm coaching someone, I try to, you know, give a lot of information, but let's nail, nail it down to two things that really matter. Right. So yeah. for example, uh, man, I, I always pick up, pick on you, man, but like apologies, but let's say like just using Ben as a random example here. Right. All right, Ben. Uh, All right. Guinea pig. <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, so the, the two things that come to mind, right. Mm -hmm. Are we're working at, at turn three at Virginia national raceway, how we want to work on a lighter brake application to roll in more speed. Let's just nail it down to that one thing. So what I've asked him to do is, you know, the weeks leading up to the events, the, the night before the event, the morning before the event, visualize, 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 but don't just visualize what you're doing, visualize the change. But when you're putting that helmet on to go out there, that for me is no longer the time to visualize, no longer the time to think about what I'm trying to execute. That's the time to focus on square breathing, bring focus internally and sort of shut off the mind. So yeah. how, what are your thoughts on, you know, coming in and what you're thinking about your goals, but then also like, do you believe in the whole shut off of the mind and breathing? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. I, I think the timing is going to be different based on athlete to athlete. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do believe that, yeah, when, when it comes down to the actual race or the actual event, we don't want to be thinking about a lot, right? We don't want our athletes thinking about a lot. We actually want them responding to the moment. Mm -hmm. right? The visualization, the training, everything leading up to the actual event, that is the preparation. The actual event is now the opportunity to rely on the training and now to rely on our instincts. Mm -hmm. So if I'm thinking about too much, that's those are going to be the distractions that take me out of the moment. And that's why I like to think of it, right? There are there are so many, and, and here, here, put them in the chat, right? Whether you're a soccer, whether you come from soccer, whether you come from, from racing, what are the distractions, right, for any given race? What are the distractions that, that, that are a part of any race that could take you from being in that present moment? I'll shout out my, where everyone's shouting in the chat. You know, even for me, I'm now on the other side where I'm trying to, you know, have a business and, and, and try to grow this thing. So now even for me, the ability to shut off work yeah. before I get on track is, is a big thing. And we see Mark talking about, for him, it's the potential mechanical issue with the car or weather, you know, racing in the rain is a pretty high anxiety thing. Cause it's low grip Ben saying, you know, rushing around be between a session. And for everyone that's not a race car driver, you know, we have, let's call it three practice sessions throughout the day. Each one might be 30 minutes long and you might have an hour between to wrench on the car, do a setup change, get a bite to eat and then get back in the race car for your next session. So it's, it's not like, it's almost like kind of like a soccer tournament, but even more condensed down Yeah, uh, yeah. is how I would yeah. explain it. Um, yeah. And I'm sure for, for our younger audience, you know, you've got school and, uh, you know, all yeah. the, I mean, I remember when I was 16, 17, like this is going to sound kind of almost embarrassing, but like I purposely like shut off any potential love life. Like I just didn't want to 
open myself up to any distractions on that side. So I was just like, nope, done, not interested. I'm over here. So I know that, you know, a lot of us can relate to that side of things as well. Yeah. And and, and it's, it's, and that's it. It's anything that is not about what we're actually doing is going to be a distraction. Right. And so if, if, you know, talking to soccer players, right. You know, the referee is a distraction. The, the fans are a distraction often our own, especially parents, right. <laughs> <It's a> distraction. <laughs> um, the field conditions, the heat, the, this, this, the coaches, like all these different things, right. Uh, Laura, like the fuel air pressure, all these different things that if we think about them, they're actually taking us out of the present moment. <clears throat> and so we can acknowledge that, Yeah. These, these distractions are a part of the event, but when I'm in that seat, what I want to be really focused on is what I'm doing and responding to all of that, all of the information that's coming in. I can't be thinking about that information. I need to be responding to that information. And so in improvisation, right, like we like to say on stage, if you think you die, as soon as you start thinking about what's going on, you have now detached from the present moment and you're missing too much information, right? Just like a, a, a soccer player who's trying to think their way through the game is now so they're, they're no longer intuitively responding. They are intellectually responding, which is way too slow in order to perform that action. Mm -hmm. So I want my athletes to do all that work on the front end. So once they're in that seat, they can trust themselves and rely on their ability to respond to the moment. And so it's interesting. This is a crazy, uh, crazy fact, uh, Dion. And now there's all, all this work that's been done around, around our thoughts. And um, something you said earlier made me think about it. But um, uh, it might have been a University of Michigan uh, 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 research project. They were able to kind of determine that on a typical day, right, a normal human has between 30 to 60,000 thoughts, okay, right? Man. 30 to 60,000 thoughts. We, okay, now here's the thing. Roughly 6,000 plus of those thoughts are actually um, conscious thoughts, right? So we have about 6,000 and change conscious thoughts a day. I'm exhausted Every just listening to that. <laughs> yeah, so talk, about mental, talk about mental fatigue, right? Yeah. And so, so 6,000 conscious, everything else is unconscious, right? So you can imagine just the amount of stuff that's going on in that side of our head that we're not even conscious of. Here's the kicker. Of all of those thoughts, 80% of those thoughts are going to be negative. Wow. And 95% of those thoughts are repetitive. And is that, would you call that um, sort of, uh, it doesn't matter who you are. Is that true for almost for, for every elite level athlete versus, yes. you know, whoever. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And so, it, so if we're going to approach things that basically four out of five thoughts that I have are negative, right. And <laughs> four out of five, four and a half <laughs> out of five thoughts, it's the same stinking thinking over and over and over again. So if I can't go into a race and think that, Oh, you know, if, if I'm questioning where is this negativity coming from and now I'm focused on the negativity and I'm beating myself up for the negativity, you're just basically beating yourself up being, for being human and thinking what everyone else is thinking. <clears throat> so this is the key. Instead of battling that, what I want to do is I want to give myself a mental plan for what I'm going to focus on instead, right? So when I choose a mantra or when I choose what my focus is going to be that is effective. Now that is, that is, that is me being consciously resting my attention on the things that are going to be effective. If I don't have a plan, now I'm just relying on, you know, to battle that, that 80% that is, that is just there. Mm -hmm. And so again, the goal with mental performance or mindfulness is what we're talking about. The goal is not to be perfect. The goal is how quickly do we notice that we're distracted so that we can refocus our attention on our intentions? Man, right? I love that. Like, it's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's so the, it's just the game within the game is how quickly when I notice I'm distracted so that I can refocus where I know my thought is going to be effective. It, it's amazing to me how many, how the language uh, of sort of high performance is, is so it's so similar right um i, I noticed from from the, the i think one of the 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 largest area uh, issues for in, in in grassroots racing when i come in and talk with a, any type of driver and this is you know the 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 
top level grassroots racers versus anyone that's starting. I think the number one issue is they have zero plan at all, like no plan of attack. Right. Yeah. Uh, and even myself, you know, now that I'm trying to transition where my mental focus goes into trying to run a company and I'm terrible at it right now. And I fall into the same pitfalls of anxiety. And like literally yesterday, I was just bummed the whole day because, you know, things are not going that well. Right. And we're yeah. trying to figure it out. And, you know, when I think back to why was I bummed all day, I'm like, I didn't, I don't have a plan for how do I, what are the things I need to test? What are the things I need to try to, to, to get out of this? Right. So this though, you using the word plan just resonates so much with me because it's something that I preach to people that I talk with, but then I fail at myself and the, the other side of things. Right. And yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't know, just that really just resonated with my mind. Well, I'll give you just a quick example, right? So, you know, again, be, being with the national team guys, you know, every athlete is different. What what works for one athlete is not going to work for another. So what I love to do is just talk to the players and be like, hey, what works for you? Mm -hmm. So one of our goalkeepers, right? And you think about a goalkeeper, so much of their time on the field is the action is away from them. And then all of a sudden the action is on top of them and they've got to be, mm -hmm. and yet so much of that pressure is, is always there. And so I was talking to a goalkeeper. I said, Hey, what do you do in order to stay focused throughout the match? He's like, before every game, I give myself a one word mantra. And so whatever's kind of going on in my life at that moment, I give myself a one word mantra that's going to help me focus. So when I notice that I'm distracted during the game, I come back to my mantra, my mantra refocuses me on the game. So it's having a plan for when we are distracted. Why? Because we're going to get distracted. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's understanding, again, we're, it, we're not trying to be perfect. We're having a plan which allows us to be better. And it's, so the better we become at noticing it so that we can refocus, now we're spending more time being focused. I love that. And it's like one of the things I heard recently, there's a, a by the way, and actually Ben's the, again, the one that introduced me to this. There's a, a great podcast or scientist, Alex Huberman, who's, yes. uh, you know, you know, Alex, right. He, I, 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 I'm a big fan of his stuff. He's a, I think he's a, a, a professor at Stanford for, I don't know if it's neuroscience. I'm going to butcher exactly what he does. Neurobiology. Neurobiology. Thanks, Ben. Uh, and he actually had a recent podcast episode, which was the science of focus. And one of the small things that he talked about there that to me I thought was so spot on is I'm a big preacher in meditation. Like I'm a huge believer in meditation and I am not, you know, wearing cloth shoes and all white linen. Like that's not me. Right. But one of the things he talked about is so many people think they fail at meditation because they can't <laughs> think about nothing. Like I can't think about nothing, yeah, but yeah. you know, with the science and I, they, he also talked about where the study was. I'll have to pull up the episode and figure out where, where, which university did the study, but essentially the, the benefits of meditation was actually building the neuroplasticity of being able to refocus, lose That's attention, it. refocus again, which was, That's I thought it. that was fascinating. That's exactly, I mean, that's exactly it. And again, I'm a big fan of, of meditation myself. Remember meditation is exercising the muscle to be more mindful, mm -hmm. right? There's, there's meditation is mindfulness, but not all mindfulness is meditation, which is why I love improvisation so much. We can get into that more in a second, but yeah, hundred percent, but here's the thing. And I was just talking to a, a group of high performing salespeople last week, and we were talking about distractions and, and meditation and mindfulness. And like I said, I'm like, if you're someone that goes to the gym to get stronger, right? The goal is not to get stronger for the gym. The goal is to get stronger for everything that you do outside of the gym. So when I go to meditate, my goal is not to be a great, it is, it's not to be great and mindful while I'm meditating. The goal is to help me be more mindful when I'm not meditating. So it's the gym for the mind. And so if I go there, I'm like, oh, wow, that was a horrible meditation today. No, no, it was that, that's, that was the mental gym. So as you go throughout your day, you're becoming better and better and better at being able to notice when you're distracted, refocus on the task at hand. And, and that's why it's just, it's a muscle, right? Neuroplasticity or, or we're being more intentional about our focus. Just like I wouldn't stop going to the gym and expect that the muscles are going to stay. I can't stop doing mindfulness activities and expect that I'm going to continue to be mindful.
I love that. So that kind of leads me into one of the main questions that that I wanted to ask you is, you know, often when we have these conversations and and I try to, you know, to to my little bit of knowledge, how to teach it, you know, one of the oftentimes the, the, the main response I get is that all sounds great, but like, how do I actually do this? Like, I, I, I know it's right, but like, what, what do I do to actually improve this? And I know we talk about meditation being one tool that we can do away from competition to build that muscle for competition. What are your other ways that you try to help someone practice this? And I'd imagine you're probably practicing this as much as you can out, out of the pressured moments yes. in, in relaxed states, right? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, let's, since we've, since I've been yammering on too much here, let's do, let's do <laughs> another group activity real quick, right? So trust me, the whole singing thing, that's the scariest the talk is going to get. <laughs> There's going to be no talk of singing anymore. So this is, we're in a Zoom world, so we're all sitting in different physical spaces. So what I want you to do, I've got my stopwatch open here on the phone. Um, I'm going to hit the timer for 20 seconds. <clears throat> what I want you to do is in the 20 seconds, just scan your entire room and count the number of objects that you see. All right. In that 20 seconds, 20 seconds, count the number of objects in your room. Go. Ten seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop. Awesome. All right. Go ahead and put in the chat how many objects you had in your room. Dion, how many did you have? I had fifty-one. I hope. 50, I hope that's 51. a good number. I've got competitive out here. Well, based 80. on your background, that's I would have said one. Right. I thought you were going to have like I have one. I have one lamp in your room. That uh... <laughs> this is it. Minimalist meditation room in here. <laughs> I like it. All right. So everyone, pretty confident in your in in your guesses. Okay. So I'm going to do twenty seconds again. This time, I want you to just count the number of blue objects in your room. 20 seconds, just the blue objects in your room. Go. Ten seconds. Three, two, one, time. All right. What were, how many blue objects? Go ahead and put them in the chat. I got 17 this time for 17. reference. That's a little smaller 17. Than, than, than 51. Yeah. Greg said 17 also. <laughs> so let me ask the question to the group. <clears throat> Which activity was easier, counting everything in the room or just focusing on the blue objects in the room? What about for you, Dion? 1000% the blue objects. Like you say everything and I'm like, okay, how do I zoom out to, to go through this, right? Yeah, I, I've got a few people saying everything, which is which is fine. Which is again, there's no wrong answer here. Mm -hmm. But what what, what we're, we're trying to paint this picture is, if you try to take in everything, right? If you're trying to take in all of that information, that's a lot to take in. It's a lot of information to take in. But if we if we actually focus our attention onto just one or two things. As you were scanning that room the second time for the blue objects, were you paying attention to the other objects that weren't blue? No. no. Were they there the whole time? 100%. Yeah. In yeah. fact, I was thinking, I was like, maybe this is the competition where you're going to ask about the blue things and then say, hey, what's that red thing in the corner or something like that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, I wasn't paying attention to the red. Why? Because I was paying attention to the blue. Yep. So, so, so much of this, Dion, is, is how can we take the complex and make it simple, mm -hmm. right? So again... I can't eliminate all the distractions in my room, just like I can't eliminate all the distractions in my life on a day-to-day -day basis, just like we can't eliminate the distractions during a race. Mm -hmm. But when we are more conscious of what we want to focus on, we turn the volume down on the distractions by turning the volume up on our focus. And so when I'm really clear about what's the most important things to focus on, it turns the volume down on all the other things that are competing for my attention. But if I don't have a plan, what I'm trying to do in the moment is sift through countless distraction that's coming at me and trying to pick and choose, well, pay attention to that one, but not that one and not that one. But if I'm super clear going into it, well, all of that other distraction 
we just turn the volume down because I'm only looking for the blue things or I'm only looking for whatever those two or three intentions were that we gave ourselves before that race. I love and, and I'm going to kind of relate this back for a brief moment to some of the racing uh, conversations. And a lot of people are talking about time in between sessions, time, let's say in between tournaments yep. as a, as a potential distraction. And when I kind of listen to what you just said there, and, and I'm going to throw in, like, how would I now coach this using this information? I'd love for you to critique it while we're here. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, this is a helpful exercise, for everybody. But how I would describe it would be, you know, when you're out of the car and you have a limited amount of time before your next session, all of that stuff to me isn't, I wouldn't word it as a distraction. It's, there's a lot of things we need to get through. Mm -hmm. So we need to come out and say, hey, what is our plan of attack here? coming out with a crystal clear and a lot of people do set up sheets that they're like okay i need to do this 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 run through that and then if we want to do some type of in-between session analysis let's say this would be setting a quick game film from your previous game for your next yep. game or video from your session or data from your session it's going in with that hyper focus where i'm not looking at everything i'm looking for one to three channels like channels could be like throttle input break put input and i'm saying where is the biggest time loss there? Yeah. That's the biggest. Let me just do that and then simplify, like you said, simplify down, narrow the focus down because you, when you're out of the car, you still need to be focused. But then when you're in the car, it's just a different level or different focus at that point. And you're kind of like separating the two completely. Would you agree with that kind of makes sense? Not knowing motorsports that well, but a high level. Absolutely. Right. It's, it's, you're relying on your experience and your knowledge to cut through all of the information to be able to whittle it, whittle it down to what is the most important information, right? You're not going to fix everything, right? You're not going to fix everything at once and at the same time. But if you can identify what are those one, two, maybe three things that, that, that if we focus on these things, that's where the, the best time improvement is going to come from. And so it's that knowledge and that expertise, which allows a great coach or a great driver to, to be able to, to kind of cut through all the other stuff that's also clamoring for your attention too, to say, hey, pay attention to me, I'm important. You're like, you're important, but you're not the most important. Mm -hmm. And so just like we don't want to get in the driver's seat and be thinking about a thousand things, they're all important, but we're able to pri prioritize really, really quickly mm -hmm. that these are the most important for this particular moment. So when I kind of think about, you know, then coaching and, and I'm going to relate this to something, I try to relate things in different ways. And like, let's say relating this to, to the business landscape, right? Like talking about where we are as a company or like our number one problem is growth. And it can be really like growth. Like what is this? And there's, you know, all like a thousand, like there's emails, there's social, there's top of funnel, there's conversions, there's all of this, there's retention. Right. Uh, and for me, I feel like I lack the, like, Hey, here are the two or three things that really, really freaking matter. Like everything else matters, but like, here, let's focus here. So when I, when I think about that, I think one of the major jobs of a coach is to help someone know where to focus is to help someone simplify yeah. on the, on like what, when you see from the men's national team, do you think that like, do you agree that that's kind of where that one of their main focus areas is simplifying down and helping people know where to focus? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, and that's the thing. And when, you know, on the soccer field, you have 11 players doing 11 different things and what one person should be focusing on is going to be different than what another person should be focusing on. Yet they're all, they're all trying to collectively work together. And even when I've been able to do one-on-one -on -one sessions with players, I'll, I'll usually pinpoint one or two behaviors or actions that I know are super important to them that if we just reinforce, yes, you, you need to do everything well, but if you really nail these one or two actions, it's going to increase your likelihood of success more than all these other actions that are, that are important as well. And so, and again, the less that I can think about and the fewer things that I can focus on, the better chance I have of actually being fully engaged in the moment and allowing my skill and my intuition to kick in. But if I'm up here, if I'm so up here that I'm actually in, that's where the expression comes from, right? I was in my head. Yep. We don't want to be in our head. We want to be in the moment. We want to be in the action.
one of the the best quotes I heard from that um, was uh, uh, for me one of my favorite comedians is uh, Hasan Minaj. I don't know yeah. if you if you're familiar yeah, he's with great. him. He's great. Amazing. And so he was on this uh, another podcast that's great called My First Million, and he was talking about his pre-show routine, and it was I mean uh, I get the goosebumps because it's fascinating. Like. I, I don't know anything about comedy, right? Yeah. I know that he's a high performer and I went and watched one of his shows and he comes on the stage and he's got that presence, right? Yeah, right yeah. from the start. And his pre-show routine, man, it sounds just like an athlete. And the way that he calls it was he's not in his mind, he's in his body. And like, I heard yeah. that. And one of the biggest changes uh -huh. in, in my career was I used to not be a great qualifying driver. That one mm. lap where you got to get everything out of the car. And, and a lot of that came down to like, I would try to anticipate what the level of grip was and I would drive to a point and that kind of held me back a little bit. Sometimes I'd overdrive, sometimes I'd underdrive. And that's where I kind of started doing this like research on meditation and all that type of stuff. And I, I, I go through body scans now and do all of that type of stuff. And the, when I'm thinking about like what it feels like when I'm in that race car, ready to go, you know, it's not thinking about breaking here. It's not thinking about anything else. It's literally like, I'm feeling my body in contact with the mm. racing seat and like yeah. trying to become more one with the car. It sounds super frou-frou and like kind of crazy when I say it, but like that terminology of in your body, like I thought that was the perfect way to say it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, one of the things I do, Dion, on, on game day mornings with the, with the players, the national team is on, on game day, it's all about getting ready for the match. Right. And so they have what we call physical activation in the morning, which is usually them coming down to the performance room with the trainers and they're stretching and they're rolling out. Uh, they're playing soccer tennis, right? They're getting relaxed. They're getting that mindset. So what I introduced <clears throat> before the physical activation is we call it mindset activation. And it's an optional. It's optional because again, it's, we don't want to force guys to do it, but I usually have eight to 10 guys and excuse me, we meet 15 to 20 minutes before physical activation in the same space and we make a circle <clears throat> and we just do a series of improv games and improv games are just, they get you um, responding quickly, not thinking quickly, responding quickly. And one of the terms I use with them, I usually start, we get into a circle, I have them close their eyes. We do one or two minutes of intentional focused breathing right? And one of the terms I'm telling them is ground yourself inside your body, right? Feel your feet in the carpet, feel your toes, right? Ground your shoulders, feel yourself be in your body to your point. Don't be in your head, be in your body. It's game day, our goal. And then I have them do these games, which again, gets them responding instead of thinking, and it gets them connecting with the other players on the team. Eye contact, connect, 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 right? When we can connect with other people, it gets us out of our own heads and it gets us literally making these human connections. So everything that I'm doing is getting them out of their head into their body and getting them into a responding mode instead of a thinking mode. So I, I, I that. The, just that idea of, yeah, feel yourself in the, in, the, in the seat of your car. And that's why, again, going back to meditation, the reason the breath, we, we use the breath as a, as a grounding mechanism for meditation, right? Is think about it. What is always in the present moment? Our breath. <laughs> so if I, if, if I want to bring my attention back to the present moment, and if I focus on my breath, my breath is always in the present moment. My mind can be in the future. My mind can be in the past, but my breath is always in the present moment. So if I focus on my breath, I'm, fo I'm bringing myself into my body and bringing myself back into the present moment. So I, I want to ask you a question. I just want to give everyone a heads up here. I'd love to, if you're cool with it, Travis, to sort of open things up to like a group Q and A. If people yeah. have questions, leave it in the chat. I want you all to start thinking about any questions you've got. Type it in the chat while I kind of ask Travis this next question here. Um, so for those of us that are in a single sport athlete, uh, or sport, sorry, single athlete sport, if I can talk tonight. Um, or let's say we're, we're a, on a soccer team where there's nobody else that wants to do that. Or maybe I'm a little worried about looking like a fool in front of my friends that aren't bought into this. What are tools or what are exercises that I can do that would sort of replicate that pre-game or pre-race? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and actually, we could, we, could, we could model, actually model one or two of them. 
uh, mm -hmm. right now. And um, <clears throat> so this would this would be an activity, uh, uh, Dion. You, you and I can do it together. This would be an activity. We probably did it when you were in person, you know, back in the IMG day. But we would do this in a circle. But I also do it. Um, uh, split people up into pairs, and we do it as well. And mm -hmm. so um, we're gonna. You and I will go back back and forth. Um, to three, I say one, you say two, I say three, and then you say one, I say two. And so we see how quickly we can get it going. One, two, three, one, two, three. Make sense? Makes sense. And so we try to do it. And I always turn it into a competition. It's harder to screw up on Zoom. In person, it's a lot easier to screw up. <laughs> yeah, when you've got looking right into each other's eyes. Yes. And, and it's like, there's always a little bit of a gap because we're on Zoom. Totally. But the goal is to see how quickly we can get it going. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Good. All right. All right. So That's... now in the next round, next round, yeah. One is now a snap. You don't say one, you just Oof. snap. So it's and then two, three, two, three. So the one is yep. a snap. Don't say one, or your partner gets a point. Or if you actually <laughs> snap when you're not supposed to snap, your partner gets a point. All right. All right, let's do it. So we'd be standing. Okay, here we go. Two, three, two, three. Two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three, two, three. Good, good, good. All right, you're all right, you're crushing, you're crushing. All right. <laughs> for the sake for the sake of our chat, last round, Dion, last round. So one stays a snap, two is a quick little golf clap, and then three. Okay. So that's three, three. Makes sense. Got it. All right, makes I'll sense. Start, I'll start with the snap. Here we go. Cool. Three, three. 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 Good, good, good. You nailed it. Trust me. In person. It's we, like I've been taught how to do this all night. <laughs> we, 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 turn, we turn it into a competition. Where there's winners and losers. Everyone has a good time. But now, let me ask you this, Dion. While you were doing the activity, how present were you? Very. Super present. Super engaged, yep. right? super focused. Mm -hmm. Were you thinking about the last question or the next question or were you just focused on the present moment? I was like, do I need a snap? Do I need a clap? Or do yes. I say a word? Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So I've never, I've never raced in a car before, but I imagine, right. The speed in which things are happening, it's like snap, clap, stomp. And it's, it's constantly changing. And it's, I would think it's probably one of the most mentally demanding sports, mostly because you have a corner within that corner. You have uh, what we call reference points that are, you know, in every corner, I, I'm probably have five different reference points leading from where my eyes are going through the corner to the next corner. And then of course you don't have the timeouts, the half times, the, the, any of that to sort of collect yourself. And that was always things that, that I struggled with often in my career was sort of like you get in the car, you go, and then if you're not right in it right away, how do you get in it while you're driving? That was something that was really tough to do. Yeah, yeah. And so again, just an activity like that, again, it gets us responding, right? We're having to think because we're having to make the little adjustments to what the new thing is, mm -hmm. but we're making the adjustments, but I've got to be focused. I've got to be focused on you because I have to respond to what you're doing. If I'm thinking of too far ahead or too far behind, I'm going to screw up because I'm not responding to what's happening right now. So I guess that, you know, if I were to think like, let's say I'm completely by myself, it, there's acts like, for example, juggling could be yeah, something that totally. really, you know, brings, I never, I always thought like I tried to get into juggling, I'm a terrible juggler, but I kind of mm -hmm. learned how to do the three tennis ball thing. And I always thought it was, you know, more about, you know, hand-eye coordination. But when I really think about it, it's probably, yes, it helps with that, but it's probably something that I could go and do before hopping in the car because you, you kind of have to be thinking about nothing else or you know even it just be maybe two tennis balls against the wall things like that are those the right type of things if you're totally by yourself that you can do yeah and I, it's funny when you talk about juggling i think the thing that i noticed um with juggling and again i, I taught myself to juggle as an adult <laughs> during yep. a during a, like a personal development course one time um what i took from it as i was able to finally three ball juggle and and like what I noticed was, A, how focused I was in the moment, and I noticed how my breathing would slow down. Mm -hmm. And again, because mindfulness, mindfulness kind of slows everything down, even though there's a lot that we're processing, it slows down it, it, physiologically. I think it, it slows down our body so that we can focus 
on being relaxed and present, even in a high pressure, high tense moment. I, I like that too, because I often found early on, what would I do? I'd hold my breath. And we all know like, that's not what you really want to be doing. <laughs> so I'd say you can almost practice that breathing yeah. in that heightened state, which is a, a really interesting thing to think about as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I call, them, I, will, I call them focus, I call them focus breaths. So when I'm teaching breath work to, to like a, like a soccer player, I was like, okay, if you, when, we, when I would do breath work with the players, I would just basically teach them deep inhales, deep ex exhales through the nose, right? Like a deep inhale, six counter, I'd say inhale as long as you can through your nose and then exhale as long as you can through your nose. And we would do that, say, for, for 60 seconds. And then afterwards, I'd ask them, this would be a situation where I'd ask them, how do you feel now? And they'd be like relaxed and focused. Mm -hmm. I was like, great. So during a match, when our heart rate gets up and we start to feel distracted, let's say the ball goes out of bounds for a goal kick, right? Can you take one or two of those long breaths, again, which is just going to help you slow down and refocus, boom, get myself back in my body, refocus mm -hmm. on the present moment? The, there's a training center that I went to in Italy um, that focused very heavily on on the mental side of sport. And they train a lot of the Formula One drivers and, and other pro drivers. And their term was always mental economy. Um, mm -hmm. And I've told a few people here this sort of story, but it was, you know, I went over there with two friends of mine that are also pro drivers. And the, the first thing you do is you get into this air conditioned room. Right. And they have like the, the racing simulator seat set up and they have a screen in front of you, you're air conditioned, you're sitting down in a relaxed state. And they're like, OK, we're going to do a, a five game test. Number one's a reaction time test. Number two is like it'll flash the word blue, but it'll be written in red. You do true false as fast as you can and, and uh, go through it. Right. So we're all sitting there. We're like, OK, let's. You know, 19 year old kids, you know, testosterone's pumping, competition's pumping. And we, we, we run through this test and we're all like, okay, who won, who won, who won? And they walk in there like, hey, you guys are all at the bottom 10%. So you did terrible. <laughs> and if you look up there, your heart rates were 140, 150 beats per minute. And the best drivers are not only killing you and crushing you, but they're crushing you because their heart rate is 80 beats per minute, not 140 beats per minute. How did you even do that? You're sitting down in an air conditioned room and yeah. their whole yeah. kind of conversation was around sort of not only does the breath, you know, relax you, it makes your reaction times faster, all smooth as fast, but it also one of their beliefs, which makes sense to me is we were taxing ourselves physically by being so mentally like over the top. And yeah. now you can't sustain it for as long a period as well. So like, how do you relax in those high focus states was kind of one of the areas that they try to really teach on, which I thought was never even, never even thought about that. Right. Yeah. Like how do you yeah. get your heart rate that high pressing a button, but there, there we are. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, and you see that, right. We see that all the time where, where the excitement of the moment or the testosterone of the moment, you know, like gives you that initial boost, but then, yeah, it's not sustainable, right? It's not sustainable whether you're running a race, playing a soccer match or, you know, behind a car, right? That's, that, that's, and it's actually not even serving you to the best of your ability in the moment. And so, exactly. right, with the, the, that whole idea of, you know, the more, again, going back to awareness and mindfulness and just being and noticing just like I can notice my thoughts, I can notice my emotions. Mm -hmm. So when I notice myself getting frustrated, when I notice myself getting anxious, when I notice myself getting um, uh, uh, nervous or whatever, I can notice that. And instead of just being the emotion, I can notice the emotion and then use these different tools to bring myself back to more neutrality, right? I, I, yeah, I work for Limitless Minds and neutral thinking is is the big framework of limitless minds right it's mm -hmm. it's and neutral thinking is being able to respond to the current situation with as little judgment and emotion as possible so that we can choose the best next response right i love that we're humans that. we're judgment machines we judge everything i'm human so i'm going to have an emotion to everything that's normal but if I notice my thoughts, my judgments, if I notice my emotions, I can be present with them and not actually let them drive the car, right? I can notice them and so that I can actually take the drivers, the, take the wheel back and go, okay, I notice that I'm nervous right now, but I'm going to notice it and then still refocus my Accept attention. It, and then, it, and then change. Yeah, absolutely. So essentially, we all need to 
become improv stars and we all need to learn to juggle are Absolutely. the main takeaways <laughs> that I've got for tonight. <laughs> well, the nice, this is a nice cliffhanger, Dan, because we did, we had, you know, such a good conversation. We didn't even get to the improv side of things, which is like, I, we could I, talk for freaking I, two days straight on all I, this stuff. I guess that'll be the next session will be, what is the, uh, the improvisation, the, the yes. And of, uh, of, uh, of, of mental performance. And that's a great little foreshadow for, you know, one of the main things that you, where I kind of got you from or, or learned from you was all the yes and stuff. So Travis, look, we've had you for an hour, man. I really,